So I'm calling the meeting to order at 6.01. Welcome, public. Um, is there any public comment? We have a young man here. Hello. Hi. Hi. He's our new rep. Oh, I, yeah? I can, would this be an appropriate time to introduce yes, our new Yes, awesome. Um, I'm very pleased to uh, introduce Mason Charleboy. Charleboy or Charleboy? Uh, Charleboy. Charleboy. And uh, uh, Mason is in the 10th grade. Uh, he's uh, nice. president of his class right now. He will be our 11th grade rep and uh, came very well recommended from um, his uh, teachers mm -hmm. and has a keen interest in politics. Oh, yeah? yeah. Awesome. He's uh, That's great. I included it in my board report, um, but help me, it's the Iraqi Youth Exchange. Yeah, yeah that sounded really leadership. interesting. Uh, yeah. Are you? Uh, July 11th to August 4th. So can you tell tell us a little yeah, bit about yeah. that? Um, I had to apply for the, it's short for I live, but uh, pretty much 10 teenagers around the nation are chosen to participate in this program. And what the program uh, entails is we talk about current issues and cultural differences and boundaries and how we can help uh, kind of connect with each other beyond those boundaries. And, uh, I was chosen as one of the 10 uh, in the United States. Uh, nice. Ooh, wow. That is really awesome. Uh, it takes place in Brattleboro, Vermont. And then we go to three cities, uh, Chicago, yeah. Illinois. Not now. Yeah, no. Either three cities, sorry. Uh, Chicago, Illinois, uh, Louisville, Kentucky, or Portland, Oregon. Mm -hmm. And then we finish by going to Washington, D.C. and meeting with the State Department. That's <coughs> Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So Mason will will join uh, in May formally as as a as we transition the seniors out. Okay. Yeah. And we don't have any kids tonight, it looks like. Well, uh, I thought we'd have w at least one. I knew that Josh was not available, um, and I thought that we'd see Emily and uh, Eva, but they may be running late. <laughs> Were they on the Germany trip? No, because maybe they were tired. No. <laughs> Did they just come back today? Last night. Yeah. Last night. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Uh, I know Emily wasn't. Yeah. So Martha and Nancy, do you have any comments? It's not a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. <laughs> Especially after yesterday. Yes. Oh, oh. I'm crazy. No, it's melting. All right. I, so. I love the shades that allow us to be in the room. It is, it's pretty awesome. This is really comfortable, Stephanie, thank you. It's really nice. Um, student reports, we don't have any, it looks like. Uh, superintendent, is there any questions? We don't have a superintendent, we can put that off till, um, unless somebody has some questions. Any of you guys have uh, questions? That's Did you ask about the, wanted to ask about the audit? About the audit. Numbers? Oh, we... Well, that's at the Addison Northwest. That's at the supervisory union yeah, it level is, anyway. Actually. Okay, so we can do that at that board mm -hmm. meeting. Any other questions for the superintendent who isn't here? We can move on to the principal's report. Um, and then any questions on that? Chris, Christina, George. Um, I'd like to congratulate Jay. Oh, yeah. Yes, welcome officially. Oh, Thank you, George. <laughs> Happened several weeks ago. So yeah. yeah, I know. I yeah. forgot about it. You forgot about it. It's <laughs> <laughs> just part of the job. Yeah. Right, Boy. right. Moving on, Thank right? You. Yeah. Uh -huh. Thank yeah. you. Actually, I do. Um, I noticed you in your report you included the proposed cuts or whatever. That, yeah, that, and I think that was the response to your question oh, a well, couple months you. ago. Yeah. 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 Uh, but I also noticed that originally wasn't there a math teacher that was going to be cut too and that's not happening now? Uh, or that was just... No. Um, we, we are reducing uh, by one FTE a math position because it's not, we don't have the enrollment to support those classes. Okay. Um, and, uh, but that position, the funding for that position was stayed in the in the budget the proposed budget okay. and it's but so it's you not know. like you you're losing a teacher but you're not losing a teacher well you see that i i'm increasing in some uh, right. other areas okay. so i i have to yeah. do some uh, increasing uh, to 
support enrollment in other areas. So, mm -hmm. okay. um, and I think with our fluctuating class sizes, you know, one class has 65, one class has 85, it, we, that's going to be the reality of what we do. So, um, Great. but yeah, it, 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 it worked out, uh, it worked out well. Thank you for doing that. So the bottom line is, did we lose a teacher? It was a one-year only position. Oh, okay. So. Yep. Uh, so yeah, we, we are we are reducing the math department by one FTE. Mm -hmm. It was really math t four sections and middle school two sections, and um, again, it, it's it's a response no. to yeah. not enough students enrolled in classes because yep. of our population. So yeah, and there is a half time English position cut too, right? Is that? Yeah, that was yeah. on this list. Right. Although, <laughs> interestingly, we're, I, I'm, she's staying on in another role. Okay. Uh, she's going to be filling in for Michael Thomas while he's on his yeah. role in sabbatical. Mm -hmm. And I had actually, with final enrollments, I needed to add one section of English. So she's okay. picking that up. So she's point eight or point nine next okay. year. Yeah. And okay. I, I would hope not to lose her. She's she's yeah. been a really nice addition after some some rocky hires. Um, mm. So. Um, yeah, that was a rough start. <laughs> yeah, so we bumped up art slightly to it, to mm -hmm. uh, accommodate the enrollment. I'm gonna I'm looking for a, a half time PE health teacher or a driver's ed teacher, depending. So it's I mean that's just gonna be the reality of of what we do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hmm. Wonder how long that is su sustainable for. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know a high school that teachers. doesn't do this. Really? No. Yeah, because you you can't you can't you can't have a, a teacher without enrolled classes, you know. But we're all looking at a, at a ch at a way of changing what we're doing anyway. So it, you know, it, it remains to be seen what scheduling will look like in like three or four years when we move to proficiency based learning. But I think it it you know we're we we're well staffed, and, and in a good place. Uh, okay. And do um, you think we're offering um, enough broad-based um, classes for our students to be interested in staying here? We haven't reduced any programming. No. Not no, not chorus. Not the the reductions were made in response to the enrollment, but we're still offering classes in all those areas. There just might be less opportunity in a given year to get what you want because of scheduling. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, where we might have had two sections of a class, we only have one section of, cla of mm -hmm. a class because we only have 15 students enrolled in it as opposed to 30, you know? So, um, but. I, I, I guess I'm stuck. The world drumming I know was cut a while ago. It wasn't. It was reduced due to enrollment. Okay. We didn't have any students enrolled in it, and or two students maybe. So we, we offered it again this year. Oh, that's we what I was don't ask. have enough. It will continue to offer it, and yeah. actually offering those classes every other year will build the capacity to actually have enough students in it yeah. to have a viable class. Yeah. Okay. So. okay. Um, I have one other question about whether any students have applied to come here through school choice and. How many students do you know? How many we have two students on the wait list for to come to VUHS, okay. and um, we had five coming in, five going out, uh, and uh, you know the going out is dependent on them getting accepted to their choice mm -hmm. schools too, and they didn't get accepted to their choice schools, okay. so they might be waitlisted or something there. So we actually we have five students coming here and two waitlisted if those other if the uh, some of the five end up not accepting their position. Hmm. Okay. How many students did we have apply to go out? Do you know? Uh, about the sa seven, I think. Oh, it's only seven? Seven or eight maybe? Okay. Yeah. I think there were three that were not selected through the lottery. Okay. So I had three questions, actually, that I asked um, earlier. We had $54,000 in the budget in, um, for Chromebooks. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering how the implementation of that is going. It's been great. <laughs> Has it? Yeah, middle school's one-to-one. -one. Actually, I think we're, that's 
we plan to do a, a separate report on that. We're still data, gathering data. We're doing some surveys because the seventh grade just finished doing their SBACs on the Chromebooks. Oh. Part of the 11th grade did part of the testing on Chromebooks, and the eighth grade will also test on Chromebooks. The seventh grade and eighth grade have implemented them extensively throughout their classes. So I, I think I'd, I'd prefer to, um, to do a, a formal report on that, but right. we're also purchasing more. Uh, more cart more Chromebooks for okay. Great. Thank you. Hi, Tom. Hi. Thanks Sorry. for coming. I, um, yes. The kids had to make some presentations, and I came over for that. And mm -hmm. the eighth graders were using the Chromebooks for their presentations. No. That was the capstones. Yes. yes. The capstones. Yeah. yeah. Th those are capstones. Yeah. Amazing. Um, do you think in that presentation we could get one of the teachers to come in and say how they're doing with it? Sure. I'm yeah. sure we could. I'd, I'd love to have their feedback. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. Um, and then the other um, Act 77 implementation for FY16, we are supposed to have the 8th grade, 7th grade? I, I, I'm not even sure what, where we're at as far as implementing Act 77. Proficiency-based learning in a personalized environment. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you've been talking um, about it. Stephanie. Well, we're moving that. I mean, the class of 2020 is supposed to uh, graduate through a proficiency-based system. We've already impl implemented that. Our 2016 is the first class that's graduating on, with responsibility for some of the PBGRs. That's proficiency-based. Right. So each class, we're adding more of those. Full implementation, full implementation of the PBGRs will be with 2020. Um, and you know, we're doing, uh, looking at standards-based grading and changes in how we deliver instruction to accommodate that. So there are going to be some pretty exciting shifts in the in the next few years. And we're also looking at, you know, our. Um, what's known as flexible pathways and alternate pathways and how we can uh, uh, open that up to more students. Um, there, sometimes there's a real equity issue with, um, for instance, kids who can drive, kids who can't drive, kids who can get themselves up to Burlington to take early college at CCV and kids who can't, that sort of thing. Um, so flexible pathways is a, a formal program or it's a... It's sort of, it's what's embedded in the, in the, the legislation uh, which basically allows students to earn credit outside of a classroom experience. So, um, you know, a content area credit under the supervision of a content area specialist or properly endorsed teacher, but through independent learning or alternate, uh, alternate experiences like dual enrollment. So taking a, a class at CCV that counts both for college credit and uh, uh, we would accept it as credit here, or early college where they finish, they can take of their last year completely at CCV or Vermont Tech or UVM, but it counts for any credits they may need to satisfy our graduation requirements, plus get a year of college or partial year of college under their belt. What's the, what are the costs of managing that administratively for, like to, to in terms of accrediting, or is it just a fairly straightforward accrediting? And right, well, it's, it's we thought we were, um, yeah, that part is fairly straightforward. We have a dual enrollment coordinator, which is just one of our school counselors, and there's a voucher system, but that's being supported through a grant from the state so far. Uh, there was talk a year and a half ago about schools assuming the cost of the credit at CCV yeah, at a reduced rate, and, you know, I was looking at budgeting about 14000 extra dollars to do that, but they backed off, and it's being supported by the grant. So uh, continued. So I think at, at some point. A state but, grant, sorry. Pardon? A state grant? Yes, okay. yeah. Um, I think, you know, we'll, ha we'll look at assuming some costs for that at some point. But, um, you know, in the meantime, our costs are reduced because we have uh, adjunct uh, professors here, our own teachers who qualify as CCV instructors to offer courses. So we have three as well, many more than that, uh, depending on enrollment, but we have three courses uh, this year that have counted as dual enrollment. And I, I gave numbers a couple reports ago, I don't remember, maybe 40 or 50 students yeah. are involved in dual enrollment classes this year. Well, and some more students it, through the Career Center as well, because yeah. the Career Center has several dual enrollment. Yeah. And Wald, the Walden program has yep. classes that have been accepted uh, as account. You know, they, they submit their uh, credentials and get uh, credentials. Nancy is one of our um, instructors. Michael Thomas and um, Lynn Kehart, along with uh, Matt Schlein. 
And Michael will be gone for a year? A semester, and then uh, we'll come back with a one class reduced teaching load the second semester. Yeah. Um, for what it's worth, I met with one of the senior morning meeting classes, and mm -hmm. I asked them uh, how the PBGRs um, were going, and the response was very interesting. They said they felt like they knew more than the teachers do. Which, which, you know, I mean, this is a new thing and so on and so forth, but it made me think, you know, what, what are we doing as a school to support the teachers in this, yet again, asking them to do something completely different? You know, I would say we want to constantly improve, right? And inherent in, in improvement is change. So there, there's going to be change. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think the way, you know what the world we're preparing our students for it looks very different from the world that we were prepared for. I'm not arguing and about the pre so, preparation yeah. I want to make sure our teachers are prepared yep. is and what then, I'm saying. Yeah and we're working on that we're working on that yep. yeah we have 16 students uh, 16 teachers taking the standards-based grading course right now I mean that's a that's a huge opportunity we're going to be offering a master's program uh, here in the district um, and uh, yeah there I mean there's 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 uh, we're all changing. I was, I'm pleased to hear that about the students because uh, some of the students have felt that, you know, they're not, uh, but that the shift is really putting the onus on the student to be more involved in their own education. It's not sit, it's not, you know, sit and receive, it's go and get now. And that's personalized learning. It's, stu it's, it's students being asked to own their own education, where they are in relation to these standards and what do they need to do to get there, to improve their own skills. So. Um, so good. That's good on the students. Yeah, I was. They were great. Well, I, I'm wondering what they meant by that. What, what do they know more about? The, I mean, I'm they, I mean, too they, because they, I asked more complaints at the beginning of the year. Yeah. What now they see there was more complaints at the beginning of the year. You're making us do this. It's our last year. Why are you throwing this on us? It's not fair. You know, yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, suck it up. So in a way, that's yeah. encouraging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, is it functioning more like a mentorship? kind of thing or like are they just like what are they being told to to do well order? the morning meeting advisors yes. are it's morning meeting groups that are um, it's in those cohorts that they are developing these presentations the yeah. senior presentations so it's a senior but ev presentation. well for the seniors it is every grade is doing some sort of presentation okay. we're building capacity but it, this is the first year so by the time the freshmen are there they will understand that okay. being well, asked to show it. evidence right. of their learning is just an expectation. Okay. Um, but, you know, it, it, having, helping students meet proficiency in these particular areas, these transferable skills, that means the instruction will have to happen in the classroom. So how do I develop critical thinking skills in my students through classroom experiences and outside of classroom experiences in order to make sure that they are proficient in this area? Or critical thinking, or reading, writing, speaking, and listening, or problem solving, and you know, global citizenship, all those things that we've identified as necessary skills for 21st century learners. I'm aware of our time issues. Um, the last question was AYP. I've heard it mentioned a couple of different times, and I know we are not in compliance with the annual yearly progress. And I don't necessarily want you to speak to that right now, unless you have something quick to say. But at some point, that would be something I'd be interested in hearing about. We don't have any scores. I mean, we're still grandfathered into the last kneecap scores, which were administered in the fall of 2013. So none of the, S the new SBAC scores have counted yet. This will be the first round of, of assessments that actually will, and we don't even know because the, the, the scores haven't come in for the Vermont, uh, Vermont cohort yet. So we're, we're, our AYP status has not changed from our AYP status in 2013. But you expect it to? I don't know. You don't know. I, SBAC is a new assessment. Those results come out in the summer, right? Usually. We're supposed to get them fairly soon. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, this year, last year they held them right. statewide. This year we are supposed to get them earlier. Okay. Um, but we don't know what that looks like yet. They're not done, though. No, I mean, the, the eighth, eighth grade has an assessed, and we still have makeups yeah, to do. Week. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, anything else for Steph? 
business manager, um, who is not here. She's probably with the superintendent, isn't she? I think they're bouncing. Yeah, yeah they're making yeah. their rounds. They're going to be here by six thirty. Okay, we'll come back to that. Facilities committee. George. <coughs> not me. No, I don't. We Chris? meet no. first Friday in May. How did the first Friday in April go? Uh, I was, was not. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Tom was, was on was there. Thank you. I'm I sorry, Tom. I was <laughs> not. So. <laughs> I'm on radar. Yeah. I wasn't. Um, Were you the only one there? Uh, Jeff Glassberg was oh, there. Okay. Um, uh, and, oh, Bob? Bob Worley. Mm -hmm. Bob Worley. And. Mark Powers. Mar Mark Powers was there. And uh, Bob took us, I mean, do you want to report at the meeting? I can summarize the meeting. Yeah, if you could, uh, he wouldn't mind doing it quickly if you could. Uh, he, he basically talked about, um, we talked about what kind of budgets we have. We, he, uh, what kind of savings there will be, probably we hope as a result of the mild winter. Uh, and uh, we talked about kind of short and long-term projects. He just provided us with a long, a long list of things. There was no clear sense about what um, it, we were just. It was a general conversation. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't a specific. This is what we're going to do. You know, when we when we know it. Though he clearly knows, and and he and, and um, Stephanie have talked about it. Um, there was one other thing that we talked about. The bigger projects as well. And I don't want to speak to that because I don't know enough about them. But but we didn't. Again, it was conversation. It was a lot of it was bringing me up to speed. The RFP. The RFP. Right. That's yes. what I was going to yes. ask. That's what you mean by the bigger project. The bigger the project. Yeah. Yes. And, and where is that stuff? Are you? Will we have? I don't think we've released year? the RFP yet. No. I I think uh, they were talking about late June, or early mm -hmm. July. Um, Who's in? Who, is that Jeff? That's. Heading that up still? Tanya. Tanya, okay. Yes, Tanya was there too. Mm. Late June or early July? Mm. The following year, because all the contractors are already booked now. Okay. Um, Hannaford Career Center, we don't have a rep. Um, Finance Committee. I have a question for Tonya. Um, board members, anybody have anything to say? <laughs> Except for Tom, who doesn't really. All right. Um, so. Hey, so we caught. <clears throat> hey, dude. Um, approval of minutes. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes as written so for moved. the March fourteenth. A second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, any discussion? It's hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Uh, approval of the bills and director's orders. I will entertain a motion to approve the bills and director's orders in the amount <coughs> of 417352 15 did I say that too fast, Gloria? So moved. I have a copy here, too. So Thank you. <laughs> Second, or whatever. Yes. Uh, any discussion? I do want to get on the record while we're here that there was a, an interest payment on the bond that was made in March, and the due date of the payment was May 1. And the, the members of the committee were curious as to why we were paying almost two months early. <laughs> Not my area. Not my I area. Saw you, I saw you receive information. It's a Tanya question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you for noting yeah. it in the minutes. Okay. So hopefully we'll get Tanya to answer that. Um, and so any other discussion? Yeah. Now I think it's Melvin's turn. Well, I, we have a motion to oh. uh, a oh, vote on, right. don't we? Yeah. OK, yeah. good. I guess you're right. <laughs> okay. Wait, did you get your question answered? Or? Um, uh, that's that isn't going to change a It's not going to, yeah. 
I mean, they've all been cut. Um, I did hear uh, in a recent seminar that I went to for Act 46 that one of the boards actually looks at their bills before they're signed. Oh, that's a radical thought. I thought so, too. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes Tanya. They must they must meet more often than we do. Or maybe they have less money. I don't I don't yeah, know. I don't know. Could be. So are there any other questions? Um we'll, Tanya, we have a question for you, but we'll go ahead and finish this so you can get settled. Um thanks for being here. Oh. Is, is Joanne coming back? Yeah, at six thirty. Yep. Uh the U E S is going to join us at six thirty. Okay. Um, so, is there any other discussion? Go for it. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passed. Thank you. Um, and now we're at the quick claim. So, Tanya, in the in the pay, uh, payables um, for the bills and directors, are, there was a check for about ninety-seven thousand dollars to the U.S. Bank. Yep. And the due date said May 1st. Yep. But the check was cut in March. Can you? Yep. Do we get a reduction for in interest? We didn't pay it. <clears throat> we cut the check and we sit on it until two weeks before it's due, and then we oh. send it in. But we cut it, making sure we have the money when we have the money. But we don't send it actually until. Awesome. It's ready. That's a good answer. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. But and uh, and it's a regardless, cash flow issue. regardless. If we sent it early, you would not get mm. a reduction. No. Only because your interest on a bond is set. Mm -hmm. Oh, regardless of when okay. you pay it. Regardless of when you pay it. Oh. It's okay. just, it's split into two times a year, mm -hmm. and that's, that's all. Okay. See, Thank you're you. just using a fancy way of encumbering the funds when you've got them. Yeah. Okay. All right. Works for me. Thank you. Um, one other thing, mm -hmm. I do have um, audits. Yes. I only have two left for the high school. Okay. Um, that are bound. Right. But you can print off your own copy off the website if you need to have one. Okay. So I do have those. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so Tanya's uh, business ex monthly expenditure report. Are there? Is anyone have any questions? Excuse me. I do. <laughs> I so knew you would. <laughs> what a surprise. I know. <laughs> really? I know. No, it's, it's, it's so surprising. I would be surprised if you didn't, Lori. What can I help you with? So the <coughs> March 7th um, says that we're, the cumulative fund balance is 138, and now we're I mean, this is good news, but I, I just, I don't like the swing. That's a, you know, a 50, $83,000 swing yeah. from last. I mean, which isn't, I guess it's 83000 isn't that much, but and it did, seems like. Did you read the I explanations did. on the back? The, uh, paying out the encumbrances should not change the cumulative fund balance. Well, it does. How? Well, be, I mean, not paying out, but unencumbering funds does, because you have that leftover money now. Number four, I un unencumbered all of that money. Uh, because because we don't we need shouldn't it. be spending it in those areas. I mean, Stephanie may have a use for it in other areas, but you know, I I talked to Bob Worley and regarding the fuel, you know. He at this point right now he's going to top off the tank, and he said it's maybe going to take six thousand dollars to top off the tank. Though we are running the furnaces this week, it got cold again. Yeah, <laughs> so it might be a little bit more, but it's not going to be a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so that that is where the the adjustment in the fund balance is because if I un unencumber right. funds, not expecting to spend them, I didn't get far enough in your explanation. Okay. I apologize. So okay. that's a, Thank you. That's roughly one hundred and thirty nine thousand dollars. Yeah, so that that means covers, we spent covers what you're talking about. <coughs> covers, yeah. Yeah. Um, what else? Um, shoot, there was something I was thinking about. All right. Um, so just so I, 
I, I just want to elaborate a little bit on this. Thank you. Um, with it, look, you know, there's only two, a month and a half left of school. I, I think Stephanie is doing a very good job in her spending. And if it stays consistent like this, mm -hmm. um, I would like to, you know, we are looking at after the FY17 year having no deficit whatsoever for the high school. Mm -hmm. That was going to okay? be my next question. Because no right now, into. if we get through 16 and we only have a deficit of 54, a cumulative deficit of $55,000. In the 17 budget, we've already got that 287 in there that we're right. collecting on. So we will have, we potentially will have a surplus, surplus. at the end of 17 Going if everything happens. Would there be any, would there be any benefit to the high school um, investing some of that in the high school somehow so that it doesn't transfer into the unified board well uh, you know that surplus you could get rid of your um, food service deficit you could take that amount of money and bring it to the voters you know a, a certain amount of money that you have left over bring it to the voters to ask them to put it into the capital construction fund or another fund balance. Or another fund or, you know, whatever. I mean, you don't have to just leave it out there for your right. will. I mean, there are options, yes, that you could okay. use that money for. Great. Uh, Stephanie, are there other funds you would like to see started besides the capital fund? How about the technology fund? <laughs> um, no, I've just seen it done differently in different schools that yeah. I've worked in. So different. they have different approaches. Um, so, you know, there's lots of things I haven't haven't been thinking about <laughs> having, <laughs> having extra extra money. money. Dollar, dollar is a separate item. Yeah. yeah. So. I, oh, you guys do. Do you have yeah. some examples of how other schools would choose to? I, mean, I could dig them up. Fund. Yeah, I don't want to talk about them now, but you know, no, it's but, yeah. my third high school that I've had experience in, yeah. so you know that they they had different financial situations too. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome news. Thank you, thank you, Stephanie. Thank you. So now we are sort of done with the meeting, yeah, and the we don't have Vui. That's no. Vui. Yes, is supposed to join us at six thirty for uh, that. Okay. Yeah. They're a little late. Yeah. They are. Hi, um, Mel. Hi, Thanks for being here. Uh, <laughs> and I would hesitate to ask you to start without them. Yeah. No, I don't think there's any reason to yeah. Yeah. start without. You really don't want to hear this twice. No, I mean, that. plus you don't want to say it twice, so. <laughs> oh, he's already said it more than once. Oh, really? That's Did he true. say it to you? <laughs> he said it to me. Okay. <coughs> I, I bugged the hell out of him Tuesday morning. Did you? Yeah. Oh, good. Did you get satisfied with the conversation? I, I think the answer is yes to that. I don't want any cover had, coercion here. I'm talking about the results that you talk about. That's, we're okay with the conversation. We had a, we had a very a very productive yeah. and informative <laughs> conversation. Yeah, 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 yeah. And no, I, I have too. withdrawn I my oh, objection. <laughs> but to the survey? I, I still got some problems with how the city has done things in the past. City? Yes. I think it's how the school has done things in the past. Well, you no. see how this conversation ended, you know. <laughs> it's it's one of those things. It's nothing that that we're ever going to resolve, so it's not worth arguing about, right? Well, it's 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 got to be a middle ground somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> this may be the shortest board meeting on record. On record. It might. <laughs> of course, we're not done. Pretty dang close. Yes. Well. Um, there were a few in August that when it was really hot in here that went pretty quick. Yeah. Oh. Um, there is a, I understand there is a expanded copy of that map that's going to be passed out. Okay. Mm. So the RFP for the, um, help me. Oh, for auditing? For the audit, the energy. Yep. Oh, no, it's a, um, wait, there's a, <coughs> there's a name for Something it. Something, um, when is that just to get started? I'll think about it. 
Okay. Uh, it'll come to me in a minute. And I, I guess I, I'm a little surprised that it's going to be, and maybe Tony, you can speak to this. Performance contract. Performance. I would, I would listen to what Tanya said, see if I can. When, 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 when is that going out? May. Oh, good. That's better. See, don't listen to Thank me. Thank you. <laughs> he said late June, early July, and, no, I, and it, that seemed a lot. Get them in July. May. We get them. Um, no. Get the bids in July. Get the bids in June? No, May, we're going to send them out. June, we're going to have the walkthroughs. The walkthroughs. July, we'll get them back. August, you should, may, you should choose a vendor. I think that's the way it's going to work. Because you don't meet in June. I mean, July. And it's for energy things? Or what's the RFP for? Exactly? It's for um, a, hiring a performance contractor, mm -hmm. which... There's a number of companies out there that they come in and they guarantee energy savings if you make these changes. Okay. And they fund them, all of the changes. Okay. And if you don't, and they get their money by your savings. Hmm. And if you don't save, then they lose money. So they're, gu they're guaranteeing that you will save money in your en energy expenses if you make their changes. Most of the work is centri centered around uh, in, in these performance contracts, uh, energy efficient, efficient lighting, yeah. other uh, heating elements, um, other electrical use yeah. kind of things. So it might be insulation. It's never windows. Okay. Um, but we're uh, hoping uh, it might we use fuel oil. Mm -hmm. um, a few years ago, many schools went through um, like biofuel and yeah. wood yeah. chips and, and yeah. the like. So it might, you know, the, we don't know what the proposal will look like, but we're, we're hoping that it, it and we're, we've designed it to include the uh, heat transference. So basically this, the steam side of the building yeah. would be included in that and the controls to, um, and that's where some savings are also. So that, you know, the controls control how the heat is being delivered mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, as opposed to someone having to actually, it's like your home, it's like an electronic thermostat yeah. kind yeah. of thing. I but they don't that. typically suggest improvements that you can't afford necessarily, or I'm like, they what happens will, if they say? They fund all of they anything. They fund the improvements, oh, yeah. Okay. They fund yeah. the improvements. Yeah. So is, is part of that going to be converting to natural gas? Well, you know, it, given the day, it depends on whether it's available or not. But of course, it would be. You know, what we, we no one. I haven't seen the Vermont gas on the street yet, so um, I think when they when they show up, we're, we'll know. But that that would have been the plan. You know, yeah. um, I don't know if if the the wood chips are still a, as attractive as they were years ago. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I've been in schools that heat that way and. Uh, so it, it remains to be seen, but that would be a that would be part of the plan, I would imagine. There have been so many conversions to the wood chip that wood chips are now I'm in trouble. harder to get in the quantity mm -hmm. that you want. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so the um, the proposal would include our heat plant, right? That's sort of the targeted area. That's right. I mean, because yeah. the yeah. steam, <laughs> right? The steam yes. is very old. So, doesn't it make sense? to have a short meeting today and and approve that when you've got the when the bids are in why wait an extra month because I, there's no meeting why not I don't have a problem have with a that at all. meeting just for that purpose so that we can get underway with this well let, let me get a better timeline okay and then yeah you know, but we it we're discussing that at the next facilities meeting anyway so. okay Friday. Oh, and I did find. I remember the other question about the electricity. Friday next. Right. And <coughs> do we really have eight thousand dollars worth of savings in electricity, or did we over budget? I just. I mean, I know we're spending like electricity down. It, well, and it would be tied to the use of the of the furnace and the and the heating oh. system. So we use, you know. That totally makes sense. Right. Because right. there's there's pumps involved and they right. eat a lot of electricity. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, and I <coughs> even things yep. and you know and I, I even for the last two months that I estimated high, okay. so that would you know you may have more of a savings than the eight thousand or less of okay. a savings. So it's right around there. All right. Again, thanks. Welcome. Really. Uh, okay. Joanne's here. Joanne's here. Does anybody have questions about Joanne's report? All right. Okay. 
Um, did, the UAS? Yeah. Here. So, so we're taking the representative the, is here. Did we vote Hi. on the, Good. the Hi. auditing? Um, this is the presentation the for the quit claim deed? Right. Okay. The SU board. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. That's fine. Yes, would you like to start? I can, well. just to get started. Yes, please do. Oh, just to give just a little bit of background here information. Obviously, from the Act 46 study committee, you know, there were land issues in Virgins, Ferrisburg, and Addison, and it was basically agreed that there would be some form of a memorandum of understanding uh, uh, entered into with uh, those three municipalities to take care of their respective issues. In the case of Regens, there was really three issues. And when I say issues, that's with a small I. Uh, one issue deals with the fire station uh, deed. We'll get to that. Uh, another <coughs> issue is uh, relative to a sewer easement to uh, avoid if, 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 the eight, if the eight acres is ever to be developed, uh, to be that, that needed uh, sewer to be able to avoid uh, uh, having to put in a pump station to serve that property with sewer. And then the third matter dealt with the fact that uh, the city owns the swimming pool, the tennis court, the skate park, the skating rink, which is adjacent to the Virginia June Elementary School. And, I, and there certainly is a history of either other memorandums, understandings, or terms and conditions, and whatever. And so Joanne, um, at the direction of somebody, got in touch with uh, Giuliani's office and who attempted to, draw, to draft this initial MOU, which was like to draft an agreement to do a future agreement. And Joanne and I, uh, I know that uh, Jason Furon was there, and I, I feel like there was another person besides us, and I can't remember who it was, so if they're here, I'm sorry. Cheryl, maybe Cheryl? Might have been Cheryl. Yeah. So anyway, one of the things that Joanne and I quickly came to the conclusion was is that instead of spending a lot of time drafting an agreement to develop some future agreement, why don't we just do the work? Mm -hmm. And so I agreed to have the city attorney uh, take a look at the quick claim deed to address the fire station that was done back in 2014, and it just ended up being shelved. Fortunately, Joanne's filing system is far better than mine. She still had it. It's still just fine, uh, other than some change of, of chairs. Uh, relative to the, the sewer easement, you know, we don't need Paul Giuliani writing city sewer easements. I have a city attorney that writes them on a routine basis. So I agreed to just make sure that those documents were completed. Uh, relative to the other memorandum of understanding, that's going to take some work. Mm -hmm. It's it's complicated. Uh, shared parking. Mm -hmm. When can the can can when the general public use these recreation facilities? We got some work to do in that regard. It's been an issue for a long time. You know, you know we're going to continue operating the pool and the tennis courts. You guys are going to continue to operate a school there. We do need to figure those things out, but. It, it was very clear to us that let's try to take care of the low-hanging fruit and uh, get those out of the way, uh, hopefully, and knowing that we're leaving the toughest issue on our, on our plate. So I, uh, I'm guilty of doing that. So, uh, so anyway, so tonight what we're trying to do is to, is to uh, hopefully start to put to bed two of those issues. So. I don't care which one you want to talk about first. If your agenda says quick claim deed, let's talk about that one first, okay. if that's okay. Mm -hmm. So in 1959-ish, uh, uh, when the Virgins High School, uh, of which where George went to high school, uh, when they closed down and, and uh, moved kids over to this facility here, uh, the what is now the fire station used to be the gymnasium. And so obviously when that school closed down, uh, that building, i.e. gymnasium, I mean, we had a, an elementary school and you have a new high school with a brand new gym. And of course, at that time, if you can imagine this, the fire station consisted of the garage that's behind my office at City Hall, all right? Mm -hmm. It's about as big as this room that between those two rows of books right there. That was the Virgin's 
fire station. Right? So obviously, uh, Ralph Dra Dragman and company were looking for a new home, gym, you know, this gymnasium. Uh, and, uh, and the way that Ralph does things is if you're unsure about whether or not the floor can hold the fire trucks, the easiest way to, the easiest way to find out is just pull them in. <laughs> All right? And if they, if, it, if they know, it's okay. And then start to put some water in the tanker. And if it still holds, you're good to go. So, so what happened in 1959 is there was a, uh, uh, at the annual meeting of the, excuse me, 1957, uh, at the annual meeting of the Virginia's Graded School District, there was an article that said to see if the voters will authorize the transfer to the city of Virginia's of the present high school gymnasium together with a parcel of land on which it is situated, this parcel having a frontage of 200 feet more or less on Short Street and frontage of 80 feet more or less on Green Street, said building to be used as a fire station and for other municipal purposes, comma, said transfer to take place only after the building and land are no longer needed for school purposes and to elect an agent to convey same. I've never, I, I know that this passed or some form of this passed because in 1959, the Virginia's Graded School District deeded the fire station property over to the city of Virginia's. The dots that, not that I've spent a lot of time trying to connect these dots, but one, one thing that we can't seem to connect is nowhere in what I just read to you was there anything about if the city was to ever sell this facility, then the proceeds are to be transferred back to the Virginia's Graded School District. It's not written here. I'm not going to say that there wasn't some discussion in 1957. I was four years old. So I don't know. If somebody's real curious about what that discussion was in 1957, go see Joanne. Let her go through <laughs> her, her file boxes. I don't have them. I'm not the keeper of Virginia's Graded School District Minute. So if you're curious, go ahead. So so obviously that that it's not a reversion of property it's 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 not basically what what the deed did in essence was to keep the fire station on the balance sheet of the Virginia's graded school district okay because if, if the city has to upon sale transfer the assets the, in the form of money back to the Virginia's graded school district that asset is zero to me all right but Anyway, we, we've owned it, operated, sunk $275,000 into it in 1978. I got to believe that nobody took a look at that deed and thought, what are we doing this yeah. for? Anyway, so then uh, in 2010, the Virginia's Graded School District dissolves. And I've always called that uh, proceeds clause stranded assets. I can assure you that when the Virginia's Graded School District dissolved in 2010, that was overlooked. I'm really quite confident of that. I happened to uncover it when David Schlansky was asking me, asking me what the dimensions were of, of the super, your old superintendent's office. That's where I thought, what the heck, what's that in there? So this is where this all got started. And uh, obviously the, the taxpayers of Virgins, the people of Virgins built that gymnasium. And the taxpayers of Virgins uh, uh, authorize the conveyance of that to the city of Virgins for use as a fire station. That, with this proceeds having to go back to the Virgins Graded School District, which no longer exists, and the Virgins Union Elementary School soon to no longer exist, and for the Virgins Union High School to soon or no, no longer exist, I'd like to just get this cleaned up. And so our city attorney drafted a quick claim deed, which was signed off by Linda Holly and Nancy Larrell, who are the remaining living people from the Virgins Graded School District Prudential Committee, and it awaits signatures of authorized people from the Virgins Union Elementary School and the Virgins Union High School, and then we would record that quick claim deed in the records, and no one will ever have to tell, hear this story again. Awesome. But you tell it so well. I know. Now. Yeah, great. I've told it a few times. Very cool. So what I'm what I'm requesting this evening of the Virginia Union High School is to authorize Joanne or somebody to sign this quick claim deed on behalf of the Virginia Union High School uh, board. 
I have a question. Sure. Uh, I'm, maybe I'm dense, but I thought the mm, vote in 57 resulted in a quit claim deed originally. So I, I'm confused as to why we're talking. It's just an article in a, in a warning. Oh, so the, the deed never got the deed signed. Was I thought, I what the said. deed was signed, oh yeah. We have the deed. I'm the, confused. Sure. In 1957, right. I read the article yep. that was in front of there. Right, which was to transfer sure. the property yeah. to the city. Sure. On June 26, 1959, right. as authorized by that action that was approved in 1957, right. Ben Gould, who was the agent for the Virginia's Graded School District, mm -hmm. signed this deed, which is now recorded in our land records, of the fire station property. It describes the property. However, there's this clause in here that says the condition of this deed is such that if the land and premises should should be sold or otherwise disposed of by the said city of Virginia, the proceeds that, of said sale you. shall be sold. Thank you, Mel. I, that so was the I'm piece I missed. For, thank you. I, I see that as a cloud on our title. Yep. Okay? Yep. And so the quick claim deed uh, once signed by whoever else of which the city attorney feels the high school board I'm not so sure that you folks have any interest in this at any way because the high school really didn't get created uh, uh, had no nothing to do with this whatsoever but but our city attorney who uh, uh, feels that a quick claim deed you can have the whole world sign it all they're doing is signing off their rights whatever those may be all right so I don't know whether or not you have any rights or not, all right? But all I'm trying to do is get this title cleared, and the city attorney claims that by having an authorized agent from both the BUES and BUHS, along with the two folks that have already signed on behalf of the uh, dissolved graded school district, would put that to bed. Okay. I would move that we authorize Joanne to sign this. I second. Any discussion? None. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Sewer easement. The other is when, when the Virgins Graded School District dissolved, as part of that dissolution was to, in essence, rid itself of all of its real estate. And obviously, uh, in 1989, the Virgins Graded School District transferred some 14 acres to the Virgins Union Elementary School and reserved all of the other land surrounding it, which is indicated on the map that got distributed. So that was, so in 1989, you know, the Virgins Graded School District, or prior to 1989, Virgins Graded School District owned a very large tract of land. And as a matter of fact, in, in, in included in that, what they owned, if you look at what did they own in 1989, they owned everything that's in that track and just kind of by the way in 1978 they bought this eight acre parcel just off uh, New Haven Road which is was encompassed in, in their entire real estate ownership so 1989 uh, graded school district sold off or tra transferred 14 plus acres to the Virginia Junior Elementary School retaining all of the rest of the property so uh, once the uh, graded school district, or part of the dissolution of the of the Virginia's graded school district, involved the transfer of all of its real estate holdings, uh, and the way that uh, that, without knowing about the fire station, <laughs> uh, the way that that transfer occurred was you'll notice a 3.09 acre parcel, which encompasses the swimming pool, tennis court, skate park, and skating rink. That was transferred to the city of Virgins in April of 2010. Uh, also in 2010, the 8.34 acre, you'll notice on that map that there's a line drawn through the name Dickerson, and it says city of Virgins. Uh, that, uh, that's the parcel that the Greatest School District acquired in 1978. That parcel uh, was transferred to the city of Virgins. The parcel in between, there's like an 11.997 acre parcel that got about, which of about 75% of it uh, is used by the high school for their athletic fields. You can see some baseball fields on there. And so 
in 2010, when I worked with Tom O'Brien, it was like, what's the easiest way to get these properties transferred? And I explained to him that the easiest way is to transfer them just the way that they got transferred because none of them needed a subdivision permit. Because the, the 3.09 acre parcel was created when the subdivision permit was granted to sell the Virginia Union Elementary School its 14.5 acres. So it, that subdivision created that piece, all right? The 8.8, .8, the 8 acre piece was acquired separately and therefore if acquired separately, it can be sold separately. And then the other 11.997, you know, arguably the, the uh, what would be the westerly chip that kind of extends over to Haven Road, you know, maybe that should have gone to the high school, but why go through a permit process, state permit process? So like I say, Tom and I, were, we were all about, let's make this simple, let's make this expensive. And so that, that entire 11.997 acre went to the high school, knowing the portion of that 11.997 was outdoor classroom. So we could have bogged ourselves down and, and created the parcel, but we didn't. We just said, listen, let's just do it this way. We would hope that the high school and the elementary will be able to get along, uh, you know, kind of co-owning, uh, you know, some land. No differently, the, a lot of people didn't even know that a lot of the high school ball fields were on elementary school property, graded school district property. You didn't, people didn't even know it. I knew it, but nobody, nobody really cared. So getting back to the sewer easement, uh, as I mentioned to you, you know, you know, I have no plans or the city has no plans to do anything with the parcel. And when I say that, don't, do not assume that we will never develop that property. I'm just telling you, we don't have any plans all right, to do anything. And that's, that's just factual. If there is anything that ever was to occur on that eight acre parcel, eight acre parcel that requires wastewater, you know, uh, obviously one solution is to have a pump station and pump that to the existing sewer main on New Haven Road. The other is what I, like I told George, currently there is only one thing left on the planet that's still free, and that's gravity. Pretty soon they'll figure out a way to tax it, but it's currently free. So what this envisions is the possibility that if this property was ever to be developed needing wastewater, we would have an easement over those two parcels. So the easement, I believe, is written in both the Virgins Union High School and the Virgins Union Elementary School because this, gra this gravity sewer line serving that site extends over both properties. I would make a motion that we approve the easement. Second. Uh, any discussion? <coughs> I know um, Sue had a question that came through email, which I didn't understand because this stuff is beyond me. Did you get your question satisfied? <coughs> um, I did not. It hasn't been um, answered yet fully. And actually, what, at the elementary school, it, it was not on our action items, just the quick claim deed was. So we were going to finalize that, that in a couple weeks and then act on it in two weeks at the next meeting okay um, we, we have no plans I'm good with that <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> so we're we the high school are in the process of agreeing to the easement mm -hmm. is that what that motion was yep what's your concern only that two had these questions and they weren't answered yet. It's also not on your agenda or your action items. Oh, that's true. I'm not sure we can take an action if we didn't have it on the, the item agenda. I, we can't do that. It's it's all, all, all wrapped up in one, aren't they? I, I would argue, I would argue that this, this land thing is all one thing. And, and although it may take two actions, it's legal for us to do it. And if the questions don't get answered at the elementary level, 
then all they have to do is not vote for it, and the easement across our land is null and void if he can't go any farther, because he isn't going to run a sewer line out into the middle of our land and stop. <laughs> Well, the easement actually has to be signed, but it's one easement. It's mm -hmm. not written as two yep. separate documents. Yep. It's one easement. Uh, both schools you know, to need to, or it has no value, really. Yep. I think the question from the elementary school is simple enough to be answered between now and their meeting. Yep. It has to do with liability of the elementary school, should they allow this to happen, mm -hmm. with the decisions that are made by the city. And the high school doesn't have any liability? The high school. The issue would, would be the same, but the question came from the elementary school. And there really isn't any liability. I did not ask a lawyer that, George, and that's that was my response. And will that question be asked to our lawyer? That, that, that question will go to our attorney, yes. Um, I'm having a hard time with the fact that this was not on our action items. And I understand that... It, that you, I mean, this is land, but this is not a, it does not say approval of land items. It says approval of the quick claim deed. But I will defer to the rest of the board if you guys don't. I, I, I actually, I agree with you and I, because I think this is simple enough that, that assuming the issues are dealt with at the, the, the liability issues dealt with, it's easy to add another action item to the next agenda, is it not to, um, it'll take us five minutes in, are we in June? No, are we in May? May 9th. May 9th. It'll take us five minutes in, in, in May to, um, assuming those are dealt with. I tried, so, no. Yeah, anyway, I, I have no idea what, if somebody has some question about liability, I have no idea what they're, what they're talking about. Um, so I'd like to know what, what specifically might be the concern relative to liability, but anyway. You'll notice on your map, there's a sewer line that runs right straight through the Virginia Julian Elementary School property today. And there's a sewer main that serves all of the Ferrisburg, Virginia's Ferrisburg Shopping Center, all of that development. This, this, this area here, I mean, you gotta, you, we have an eight inch sewer main heading right through all of the Virginia Julian Elementary School property right now, all right? So this is basically a service line. And as a matter of fact, the Virginia's Elementary School ties into that line. Uh, the Virgin swimming pool ties into that line. High school ties into the line. So, you know, I, I, like I said, I don't know, I don't know what the liability concern is. I don't know. Uh, happy to answer what it is if I knew more about what, what that question is. If, if we agree and you have occasion to install the line, this gives you permission to go on the land, dig the trench, yep. put in the line, put it back, cover it back up, yep. go back 20 years later because it broke and fix it. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Anytime the city is doing something like that, the liability for injury or damage is upon the city for what they're doing. Absolutely. So I can't see as there's any way that the school district can be liable for any of this. I, I don't think it's an issue. So, so in the interest of time, um, mm -hmm. I would recommend that you do what Tom offered, and that's to put it on next month's agenda because it could very likely just be an easy response. Um, but at this point, uh, I think because we mm -hmm. we need to move on to yep. the next meeting. <clears throat> so I'm assuming you're withdrawing your motion because it wasn't a good motion in the first place <laughs> because we didn't have it on the agenda. Can you do it, George? I think the chair should have never allowed any discussion on this. You know, that's really. <laughs> uh oh, Mel. There you go. Mel. Well, Mel. <laughs> I'll, I'll agree with that. <laughs> Thank you. That sounds like two against one. This agenda. That's what should have happened. I. But no problem. Okay. It's not my I, I, I wish. I wish the <laughs> chair had, had brought this up in the first place so that we could have amended the agenda and included the action item. I, I, I didn't know there were two. I, I didn't know there were two items. I only knew about the quick clean. As long as it didn't happen, yeah. Mel. No, I'm sorry, you got to wait. Well, I'm not coming back. <laughs> I don't think I need to. We we know the issues. Okay, thank, thank you. Sure, you it'll be fine. Um, I'm sure it'll take. Right. So I'd like a motion to adjourn. Did you withdraw? Yes, I will withdraw my motion. Thank you. You got that, Corey? I motion to adjourn.
Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Aye. All those in favor. Thank you. Um,